Should be okay. So, show of hands who, who wants it to be Dante. Show of hands who doesn't want it to be Dante. The Dante rumors are flying fast and hard. I believe Devil May Cry 3 comes out on the Switch today. Uh, which, by the way, seems to be an amazing version of the game since there's actual style switching in, uh, which is fucking wild. Um, so a lot of people are... No, sorry, it comes out February 28th? Okay, sorry, then today was the day they were announcing the style switching then. I remember that because they had three dates for it. Eh, maybe I'm wrong, doesn't matter. The rumors are flying fast and hard, a lot of people crediting it to the imminent release of Devil May Cry 3 on the Switch, which, again, looks amazing. I, I, I don't know, I don't, eh, I don't know, I didn't find in particular that those those dates lined up in such a way that this had to be Dante. I don't strongly feel that it's got to be Dante or going to be Dante. Frankly, at this point, I hope it's not Dante because I would rather people not be able to guess these things successfully. I'm, I'm hoping it's someone who's completely off our radar, um, like Mock Rider or Urban Champion. Actually, I guess they're on my radar, so they don't count, right? But... I, I, I always prefer in Smash when it's one of those characters where you're like, hey, you're not a fighter. We're going to make you a fighter. You know, characters like Captain Falcon, uh, Ice Climbers, Mr. Game & Watch. Characters who, at this point in time, are almost more defined by their role in Smash than their historical roles. Um, characters who, like most people would not consider for Smash, because I feel like a lot of people are looking for fighters, like Dante and Sora and the guy from Doom and stuff. So that's my preference, but anyone who would disappoint you, I don't I don't think like unless this character was like a clone, uh or wait, what's the proper terminal? Echo fighter. Um unless this character was like an echo fighter, which it's not gonna be, I don't think anyone could disappoint me because I'll, I'll be frank as much as I don't like Corrin very much in Smash I don't think they've ever made a bad pick you know I as far as their non echo characters go I think every pick that's ever been made for Smash has been good and I have faith in their hello everyone so, I'm Masahiro Sakurai yeah, director anyway, of we're Super in, Smash so Bros. Ultimate from Sora the Limited volume, by the way We'll be using today's showcase to give you a first look at our next DLC fighter. Actually, hardly anyone knows what we'll be announcing today, even among Nintendo staff worldwide. The development team and other stakeholders have been working on this fighter with the utmost secrecy, which means other Nintendo staff around the globe will only start making preparations for release after the showcase has been broadcast. So, it won't be available right away. Please understand that it will take a little time. Good. Because I don't I know if my Switch is set up properly. I think many Nintendo employees will be surprised to see this and say, Wow, really? <laughs> a little lower? Okay. So, let's all share in the fun of getting our hands on the latest information. However, even if you say, That's not the character I was picturing. I hope you don't have any hard feelings. <laughs> Please, nobody We've prepared a fighter feeling. reveal video. Once it starts, I think you'll figure out who it is pretty quickly. Now, let's do this. I'm excited. It's Goku. <laughs> The time has finally come to unleash the forbidden spell of Zaharas upon our enemies! I feel like maybe they're summoning the character right now. I hope it's not Byleth. Is it Byleth? <laughs> what were you thinking, charging right into an enemy's trap? As you and I are one, I too am trapped within this void. In time, our hearts and minds will cease to be. I would prefer to Sothis to Byleth. Are you prepared to die? <clears throat> I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet... <sighs> there is no other choice. <sighs> you must join Smash. Huh? 
join Smash Brothers already! What in the world are you waiting for? You know, I was saying that I don't think I'd be so disappointed by any pick. Smash consumes I don't, the I, darkness mm. itself. That Dante would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm eating my words pretty hard here, honestly. Just like Corrin, I'm sure he will be fun to play, but does not thrill me. So you return, and sooner than expected. I see. Too I hope you can play as Girl Byleth. Yeah, too many and swordsmen. You, you wield the sword as well. What will you do? Can I use an axe? So that is how you plan to win the day? So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. How is this? Okay, this is a little more interesting. Oh. Of anyone, you should be able to handle the hero's relics. Okay, well, I mean, I like that better, but it's still, like... Violet still doesn't super thrill me. I'm happy Girl Violet is in, because that was how I played the game. And whenever I see Boy Violet, I'm like, that's not... That's not my character. <laughs> No, don't beat up the two, come on, be nice. Each weapon matches a direction. Okay, so yeah, they're your specials. I like the looks of the arena and how all the characters are around. I guess it's one of those arenas where you get, like, zooped around in different areas. You know, again, I have so much yes. faith this will be a fun character because they've never not made a fun character. But uh, this wasn't the announcement for me. Last summer, so it's still very new. Even so, you'll soon be able to play as them in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This release is planned for January 28th. You'll have instant access if you have the Super January Smash Bros. Okay. Ultimate Fighters Pass, and it will also be available for purchase individually. Yeah, I agree. I hope people don't har harass Sakurai on Twitter for this. Because they so fucking worry. shouldn't. First off, what is Fire Emblem? It's really hard to pronounce in Japanese. The producer said it's okay if I just say Fire Emblem. But when writing it, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. The series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. I feel like I know this history. Particularly tactical. I feel like Melee was well, the game that got this history that across to me, combat. but... You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game. Or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid and battle. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific Yeah, you know, I really like the format sort of, of like these videos. Because he's clearly very prepared and he has a lot to say about the characters. Plus, something made it stand out from but other But for Fire Nintendo Emblem specifically, I don't, I don't feel like there's much, there's much here for me. <laughs> That's pretty direct language, though. So perhaps I, we should. It would be really cool if he could make it so that in fishes. Smash they could permanently die. If your character really, loses a character stock, they battles, permanently you die, and you lose them. They'd be gone, and you couldn't use them again. 
Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you, but a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be. I actually wish never to Fire Emblem would still default to killing your characters. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. series, and six of the seven can use a counter attack. It's their down special. Man, it's true. I think I would have preferred Edelgard. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's turn. They attack, hmm. and you counter. That's a... Next comes your turn. That's actually a pretty neat bit of trivia. And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Yeah, we well, only have like... include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, seven? but you don't include the Satellaview okay. game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. I'll give it a try. What a fucking nerd. There you go, 17. Wow, I'm kind of shocked that I knew all of them. I always, in my mind, think so there's more early ones. you saw how I was counting in a weird way, right? But there aren't. I was counting in binary. This is zero. Fold this here and you get one, and then you get two, then two plus one equals three. So this would be four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you get 16. Add one and you get 17. Awesome, isn't it? Can't wait for all the Smash fans who are going to count like that now. You can actually and, count and, like to 31 on one hand. Smugly explain it to everyone. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1,023. If you've given up counting the knots in a tatami mat, you could always give it a go. What is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Bereto and the female version is called Beresu, but in English they share the same name, Byleth. Byleth becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life, and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with I really like the beginning of this game, the other but like, their I had a hard time sticking with it, to be honest. In which your former allies become enemies, That's a shame, because I hear, like, kill you. as the story goes on, it does get really cool. But like, I was the just so Fire Emblem Three Houses, done I played with running around the, uh, the monastery over and over. The monastery, like, I've just drains so before, much time. With the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, deal, for example. You know, where it was like, because I my, couldn't wait until my launch time doing laps around the monastery. In time. For that title, I borrowed like, an early version of the game. Two you days, know? ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. And of course, there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. Uh, the Behatted says, so all those leaks are super wrong though, huh? Yeah, ever the since the fucking beginning. And the but I don't know why people like different. believe them in the first place. Your experience will vary depending you know, on the, the ones with like and many of the characters Slayer you and Steve and stuff like that. Like. I'll try to avoid spoilers, every time, but I'm every game, about the every Smash game that comes out, it's fucking wrong. This is just never. Before my demonstration, <laughs> I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard showcase video, I mentioned it's that only it going to be less enjoyable if you guess right. But this time, so don't we have to it. account for the holidays <laughs> and such. So we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Right now, it's actually this is November. recorded in November. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Right? Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. 
It's fun to believe, sure, yeah. Steve would have been fun. Steve would have been cool. So, so, this is our new fighter, Violet. I would have been super down for Steve or Jonesy Sadly, to be in, honestly. Sadly, they're lacking honestly. in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. So like, the mid range relic stuff. Changes depending on the direction like a new you dulcim. input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Byleth uses for upward inputs, the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator here is Byleth's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, I wonder how this arena transitions. The whip because it looks. I do really like the arena actually. The as much as I got super annoyed, like spending so much time attack, in the monastery in the game, uh, the, the monastery is still overhead. a cool area, and I like that it's here. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. The up special move is really something. The sword extends like this. Yeah, you're right. Good, good pick for the song here. I'm, I'm it was guessing it'll have a good selection. I knocked him into the air with that attack, and in addition, oh wow, you can do awful things Ooh. like this. <laughs> That's pretty nice, actually. That said, you'll launch opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. Wow, that combo is early off a of down tilt. Exceed that percentage, a fair amount of and you need to be too, careful. So. You may find it helpful to mid-air dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So that's, that's a really fun special. move, actually. I like that. Now for the sideways inputs. This is Erdvar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic mythology. First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach, like so. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Wow, nice range then. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. Stronger on up tilt specifically. And if you've knocked okay. an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. Of course The shaft is. part is weaker. That's good though, that's like how it should be. So it's not suited to close combat. It seems pretty damn powerful. It won't deal much damage, it, so. and it won't launch opponents far. Yeah, I like that. That's why, as a rule, you want to hit with the blade part aimed upward. Or downward in this case. Next, the side special move. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Really? Oh, because he steps in. Yeah, okay. Actually, that is some pretty nonsense range, actually. A little, like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. Use it in mid-air and you'll carve up a large area. Returning to the side air attack, that seems all right for like neutral in the air. They have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this complements it well. Although you'll be vulnerable when you land. Mm, maybe not then. Now for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. It's named after a weapon. God, Byleth's animations look really good, though. I really dig them. First, the down air attack. This is certainly. Uh, I don't really is tend to really have the complaint that there's too many sword characters. Otherwise, try for like, a effect with this I wouldn't want Travis touchdown or Dante in Smash, you know. Attack. But um, 
Heavy swing they certainly did a lot to make him not a sort of character. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch. I think I think they did a fair job at that. I, I think I would have a hard time and for calling Byleth a sword character considering this move set. Byleth channels all their energy into a devastating strike. It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Which allows you to withstand yeah, an attack. Well. I like that kind of move. Just so you know, I you like that kind of dumb damage move. About the same time. <laughs> cool. I like that armor. Slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super armor effect. Slower than the Falcon Punch. Okay, I like that move. Unless you of course, I play Ganon because I like my stupid moves. And Another Ganon is only stupid is moves. That it lets you pass through but I like that move a lot. Whoa, okay. Charging up, you can That's big past news. Platforms like this to reach a lower area. Can't do that with Warlock Punch. It won't let you jump. Can't you do that with Falcon Punch. Attack. That's actually really nice. Also, you can turn around during the move. Okay, cool. It's good that you have the turnaround. The swing takes that you do get with Ganon. So if an opponent uh, runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. Wow, so a little bit slower, but this just seems better Even than the Falcon be hard Punch. To land a hit I mean, I guess you can't really use it in it the air, really effective unlike the Falcon Punch. Plus, this seems like it might just be better than Warlock hit, Punch. Any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little. It seems like a very nice move. It's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I'm gonna counter them. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from yeah, the Fire Emblem series because you'll just get loads of counters. It hits with that much yeah, power shocking. in a single attack. Counters can actually multiply the power. I love the path of his leg and using like, the follow through of the attack. Like this, could just get you. Oh, he does this big like after counter. compensation upwards and then steps Next, in. Have the it move. looks so nice. The bow you now he's not going to do it again, Fail so he won't be able to Which shares it. its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pitts and other fighters like him. It lets you spin the weapon around. It's also easy to create certain combos with it. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. Yes, please tell me, because you're right, First, it is very straightforward. The biggest difference between this bow and Lynx is that once you enter the command, you can keep charging until it's ready. You can't release it part way through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels oh, I see. at high speed. It's also it's full very powerful. That said, okay. you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. You can also change direction while in the stance. That's it works up hit. until this point, but if you keep holding the button, you'll unleash a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. Yeah, Violet seems pretty fun. You can perform this move by keeping the button held down. I'm like you super in for these dumb like moves. So. Charge a bit more and then fire. <sighs> but again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Not even with the shield button. Mm. In other words, you're committed to fighting. So in that second phase, you're stuck. Okay. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's so predictable. Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. Which means it's quite the risky attack to use against Man, I kind of like how much of a glass cannon Byleth is in that but regard. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, Both with his down B and with this. Letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. It's a very fun moveset. So, you need to think carefully when using this projectile weapon. Byleth's final smash is called Progenitor God, Ruptured Heaven. The Sonic Coast says, okay, this character is competitively shit. Well, this I mean, we'll still have to version. see in practice how the character plays out, but... Certainly, against some characters, some of your moves are a little obsolete. As but I mean, see, you, you know, competitively, nobody's using, and launch an nobody's using Warlock Punch anyway, you know. Being careful with projectiles is a normal thing. Now, know. let's talk about the color variations. Because if you're playing a character so who has a reflector, you need to know all your opponent's projectiles, and you, well, you, projectiles and you should be watching for them at all However, times. However, so. the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Yeah, these ones are alright. 
Those of you who played the original game will of course understand what I'm referring to. The sixth color is based on Sothis, who you just saw earlier. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on based on something that occurs in the course of the original game's story. Didn't we see this variation in the final smash? Yeah, those are good colors. Those are nice. Okay, yeah, explain Next, to me the I'll monastery. The How do we move around in it? For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game. Garrig Mach Monastery. This is how Garrig Mach Monastery is laid out in the original game. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, and cathedral all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. I like how they use the map to show this. Let off. me introduce That's each cute. of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first area is the marketplace. I think this yeah, is where a lot of people there. come to do their Love shopping. Them. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house, Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Since These are very kingdom, Japanese jokes about the translations here. For that reason, here. I guess you could Same say with Dimitri the one is the future king. He had quite a difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. Guys, He's don't call him Dudu. Don't do that to him. He's better than that. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but uh, here you can break them, you see. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left the and right. Stage is banned. Stage is banned already. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. <laughs> and in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. There he is. You often pass through this area in Fire Emblem 3 houses, and you end up talking to him Love a lot. Guy. Moving through these areas is possible okay. thanks to this mysterious platform. Just Ooh, when I like this like little to stop, mountain scene. You'll okay, all right. Yeah, that, that we broke into the ceiling and slammed into the building. I like how the um, and the guests candle, in the reception hall are all kind of like came in. Dorothea That's and cute. Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire, and as such, they embrace their military might. Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. Nice, I like that. Like in uh, Punch-Out stage. However, Byleth can't actually reach it, even though it's their stage. You can reach it with other fighters, though. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. The stage is like quadruple there we go. band now. I made it. And you can knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. Just like the sign that reads Fuding Kazan in the Suzaku Castle stage, it can break if you launch the opponent into it at close range. I like that, just like breakable geometry in the stages that like you don't even interact with. That's Next cool. Next up, the bridge. That's the fun. The camera rotates 90 Smash degrees, didn't used to have that creating shit. this long Whoa. area. It's very wide indeed. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer, Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the Lester Alliance. More like the Lesser Alliance. Am I right? Because it's an alliance of many noble families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. You can expect plenty <laughs> main feature of the bridge is, the is really wide, I guess. I mean, I got nothing. 
You could also say it's a place where the fail knot really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the golden deer perfectly. The last area is the cathedral, only with some platforms you can pass through. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seda, Flane, and Rhea. I mean, who else was it going to be in There's the cathedral? There's Seda, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flane. She seems to be under the protection of him Flane, and Rhea, who, is trapped who you in can the McDonald's see fighting play during place. the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All three have Eater character guard quirks put TNT all over Flane's identity. house in the, in the school Minecraft server. I feel that Flane might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. This is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team All the pitted DLC against team. Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. All right, here we go, Joker. Man, we gotta watch Joker! this starting with... Okay, good, that's what I want. For a second, I thought we were actually gonna be watching him just play as the other characters. Jeez, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! By now, I think you know what I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just the Professor here. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hands on. Big show off. It's not going to land that easily. Uh oh, this is bad. Benegas. I better keep my distance. These bits of these streams are always the bits where I'm like. I'll use this chance Matt to attack. Matt has the translator feel about translating these. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. They come across, like, a little awkwardly when translated. It's not quite as natural. Lots of explosives. Ouch. He perfect shield at that, huh? Good one. If I do this, like this, or like so... No anti-air, huh? There. The soccer ball connected. Good. There's oh my Mom. god, well he's gonna win this stock. With this fucking You're unstoppable spot, team over there. Ah, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. Oh my god, it's true, I am covering Sakurai. You're I right. feel like the enemy That's might all get wrong. this smash ball. See? They got it. But I mustn't give up. Need to be next to him. I can't waste the chance. Clearly, this is the answer. There's another smash ball. Yes, got it. Now, what are you charging up for? Okay, yeah, that was a zero, right? 47? Okay. There's still more. Whack. Oh, that went up through that. Okay. Go on. You can so it doesn't just get stuck or stop when it collides with something. Although, I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. I hit him. I was trying to fight using Byleth's abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. Good game. I was gonna say, there's a lot of item wins there, but whatever. The win's a win. It can be fun to play like this, especially yeah, in tag team, down. so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. Yeah, okay, hit me with the music. Now, about the I imagine it's music. mostly going to be tracks from this Since game, and that, that's Fire fine, Emblem honestly. There's we'll already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks, tracks in. To all the Fire Emblem stages. I would be down with Kawashi There are already a lot of Fire Emblem in. tracks in the game. Our selection this be time cool. has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being yeah, okay. added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. I would have been super down for some Tokyo Mirage Session. We're also tracks, adding honestly. in a new spirit board. It includes the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. 
Sothis is legend. Of course, Sothis is the legend. Yeah, uh, that checks out. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand, but you'll find that something pretty amusing happens. So look forward to that. Okay. Yeah. You know, I actually will. Now for the I like costumes. all the weird shit that they do Please there. Please take a look. I hope they put Sans Undertale in again. Bruce? Oh, cool! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. An Altair especially? That's great. I like that. That's a really cool one, actually. I really dig that. <laughs> yeah, let's fucking go. These are great. I wonder if Rayman is gonna get a, a skin as well, since we're on this little Ubisoft pair. Ugh, it's fucking Mega Man. Nobody even likes Mega Man. <laughs> Yes! Battle Network! Everybody likes Mega Man! <laughs> wow! Wow! Amazing for them! Is this... This is a good-ass costume. Includes a music track. Nice. Wow, yeah, this costume looks like... Amazing, actually. Like, uh, sort of like Sans, how Sans looks so incredibly good. Like, that could be confused with an actual character. Wow, that's awesome. If you've been practicing your, your Sans tech, guess what? You got a new Me Gunner now. Yeah, well, I guess I'm gonna buy Cuphead. But I'm not gonna lie, Altair is pretty appealing. I, I like that Altair costume. Cuphead costume. And it's interesting that it's Altair and not SEO. I, but I like that. An additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. I hope you enjoy these as well. Yeah, I remember you saying Rabbids yesterday, Commando Joe. After purchasing a on costume, Twitter. I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, on to the Amiibo. The color palette for Dark Samus God, is pretty good, so isn't good. it? Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. I like how Smash has been, like, keeping Amiibo going strong, you know? There have been other Amiibos and, and quite now, a few of them, the of Violet, but Smash the fighter's mostly. Task is finally complete. It's been so many nice stuff. The lineup was so Joker, so so Hero, nice stuff. Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogart, Yeah, I mean, that's a good Violet. roster. Violet certainly looks a little more fun than, than at first blush. From more than 70 fighters, only five have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. There really were a lot of new mechanics, weren't there? Yes. When we add That's a new a fighter, question, we don't yes. simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. Yeah, I don't imagine we're actually going to hear about any of the characters, but are we going to get a number? Yeah, okay, another five, yeah. Ooh, another six. Nice, okay, cool. Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. <laughs> For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for people. So they're just gonna the roll show, right into so this. Please That's keep dope. an eye out. I like that. And now that it's official, we intend to move ahead with development. 
Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. Like last time, I'd be very grateful if, despite that, you would understand why and purchase it. Furthermore, the new additions have already been yeah, decided. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> Even if I received many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I have complete Twitter, faith I'm afraid that everything it would be very hard to touches, consider them. So... <laughs> but I still hope you'll look forward to it. We're also including a bonus with Fighters Pass Volume 2. Last time, it was a Rex costume. Yeah. But this time, here's what we have. It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter, the ancient right. soldier gear from The Legend okay. of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm buying it for the characters anyway, so this is... This will not be for sale okay. individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. As it should be. Yes, oh my god, don't fucking start this Seems up like again. Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? Yeah, I agree with what but he's saying But when it comes there, to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. I feel like it's become more than a fighting game, some sort of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. The first fighters pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there would be more DLC. Which means, no breaks for me. I plan to keep working hard, so I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Well, it was Byleth. Alright. Um, yeah, Byleth doesn't thrill me. Uh, at first blush, I certainly felt more negative about it than after seeing the gameplay. Uh, Violet does have cool stuff going on that I actually do quite like. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm keen to try Byleth out. Not the most thrilling character, though, for me, honestly. You know, again, at the beginning, me saying, and nothing would really disappoint me. The character picks, like, eh, not that, not that exciting to me. But hey, at least Byleth looks pretty fun to play. Um... The, uh, the me costumes, though, Altair, that's so fucking cool, getting Altair in there. That's such a weird, specific one as well. Like, Cuphead is still modern and relevant and extremely good, uh, and Rabbids are still relevant and, well, I guess somewhat modern. But Altair is a very specific 2007-era pick who never carried forward into any other mainline games. He had a, a spinoff or two. So Altair is a really interesting one. I, I guess they picked him because he's the, the what an assassin looks like default, right? But I don't know. Some people consider Ezio sort of the default look. So I'm happy with it being Altair. I think that's like really cool. Oh yeah, you're right. It did say Smash Cross Altair. You're right. It didn't say Smash Cross Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that is, that is peculiar. But you know what? I, I like Altair as the pick. I think that's a really fun pick. Those are the kinds of fun picks that I like, honestly. So, yeah. Uh, Megaman.exe is in, which is great. Uh, another Mega Man X costume in, is in, which is whatever. It's X. Who even likes Mega Man? Um, yeah. I mean, you know. You know yeah. Byleth, not the most thrilling character. But 
as always, Sakurai's streams are entertaining to watch, so, you know, it was, it was, it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> four, four for five on this Fighter's Pass. <laughs> and yeah, I guess Fighter's Pass 2 uh, coming with six characters now. I didn't catch the price, whether it was the same price as uh, Fighter Pass 1, but I'm sure I will find that out ten minutes from now when I buy it on the eShop. Um, which you bet your ass I will buy that right away. <laughs> Hard to say no, you know. Now he'll be doing this forever. I know, right? I imagine, I don't know, I, I, I imagine Fighter Pass 2 will be it, and then, and then we're not going to get more. Because at a certain point, like, he needs to actually focus on other projects. And, like, I imagine that he's working on another project while Fighter Pass 2 is going. And well, have while Fighter Pass One is going as well, was going I should say, um, but at a certain point he's gonna have to pay attention fully to whatever that new project is. So I imagine Fighter Pass Two uh, works well in the interim, where he's still not, you know, he still doesn't need to devote twenty four hours a day to Kirby Air Ride Two or whatever it is. So new Kirby, yeah, Sakurai doesn't really work on the Kirby games anymore, does he? The the mainline ones. Would be cool if he made a ride too. I would really like that. Kid Icarus Uprising too. God, I wish. God, I wish. I feel like the time has passed for a port of Kid Icarus Uprising. It felt really natural on the Wii U, and now it's like okay, kind of in the lurch in that gap where it's like not old enough that it's like unplayable these days, and like not Wii U enough that it's gonna immediately get ported to Switch. So, hey, just make Mario Kart slash party with Smash roster. Yeah, I'd be down. <laughs> I'd be super down. Yeah, well, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream. I'm sorry if that wasn't as thrilling as we all expected or hoped. Um, but, hey, I guess that's the, that's the way the cookie crumbles, right? Um, I'm not sure when I'll be on next. I straight up just don't know. Uh, but for some of you guys, this might be cool news. I am actually heading over to Matt's in like an hour or two to record Life is Strange 2, uh, episode 5. So if you've been following that playthrough on Matt's channel, uh, it will be done soon. Uh, I know we were really slow on episode 5, unlike all the other ones. So it is coming, and then it'll be done. That's been a really fun playthrough. If you guys have not caught that, by the way, it is on Matt's channel, and it is good. Is Life is Strange too good? Um, I haven't played the last episode, so uh, my opinion excludes the ending of the game, which is kind of crucial. I don't think it's as good as the first game, narratively. Uh, I think the big strength of the first game that I took for granted is that you're always in the same place for the first game, more or less. So you get a lot of face time with a lot of characters through all the episodes, and you really get to... Uh, to see them grow and see them change. In Life is Strange 2, not so. It's more of a road trip. So you're seeing a lot of new characters every episode and you don't get that same relationship growth with every character. And I do think that is a weakness for Life is Strange 2. It's good, I quite like it. Uh, all of the gameplay elements are improved in Life is Strange 2. Um, the environments are bigger and more, and they look really good. Actually, it's a pretty beautiful game. The environments are a lot bigger. It's more fun to explore. Um, but the original was really good. So I, I don't think it quite peaks over the original, like overall, especially like narratively, I don't think it's going to make it. Um, so, uh, this is putting aside, uh, Life is Strange before the storm, which I think is the weakest. Like, the only redeeming thing about Before the Storm... Well, that's a bit harsh, but I guess my favorite thing about Before the Storm is just getting more, like, time with these characters we know uh, before the first game took place. But, yeah, like, Life is Strange 2 is above Before the Storm, but below the first game, I think. But anyway, I want to finish the, the last one. So, so yeah. What do you think they could do for Life is Strange 3? I don't know. <laughs> they just do whatever they want. There's nothing, in, there's nothing in particular that I want them to explore, but I do find it interesting, the topics that they decide to explore. So uh, I don't know what they're going to do, but I hope they just do something cool. Uh, that being said, their new game... Um, gosh, I forget the name of the game. Um, 
their new game that they're developing in partnership with uh, with Microsoft seems very Life is Strangey. Uh, uh, Tell me why. That's what it's called. That game looks like it may as well be Life is Strange three, in a cool way. Like I, I, I dig that sort of thing. So keen to play that. Matt, Matt and I are already talking about like, should we do that since it <laughs> may as well be Life is Strange? But hey, I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. What did Matt tweet about this direct? Really happy for Three Houses fans not too upset I missed the stream. Yeah, that that checks out. That's fair. Whatever. It's fine. This is not a character for everyone. And certainly not as uh, thrilling a character as people expect, as a lot of people expected. Um, I do think that, like, with character picks like Byleth, a lot of people parse, like, if you're thinking about Byleth and Smash, a lot of people just parse it as like, nah, that's too safe. They wouldn't, they wouldn't pick that character for the DLC. It's not, it's not like thrilling or out there enough um, because they've established having some pretty thrilling and out there picks. Um, so I do think that that kind of gave Byleth a disadvantage, especially coming fifth. So, you know, yeah. Pariah says, I just want to know what's the deal with Fire Emblem. Why does that series get so many? Does Sakurai just really like it? You know, I was actually thinking about it during the thing, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Sakurai must just really, really like Fire Emblem. Like, it's gotta be, right? At this point, oh, it's just fine. You know, you do you. You created this series. Put as many fucking Fire Emblem characters in as you want. Um, it's gotta be, right? It must be. I do wish some of the Fire Emblem picks weren't, like, just main lords, you know? But, hey, this is what it is. It's fine. I'd be down for some more weird picks. Like, put Hawkeye. Like, Hawkeye. Can I get Hawkeye? How much do I gotta pay to get Hawkeye in Smash? I know everyone wants Hector, but have you thought about Hawkeye? Because we could use him. So, yeah. Or Amelia from Sacred Stones. How do we get her in? She's great. She's good. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to I'm going to tap out for today. I don't know what I'm going to be streaming next, but it's either going to be Death Stranding or Kingdom Hearts. Probably Death Stranding cuz it's only the 16th today. Kingdom Hearts doesn't come out for another 8 days. I am pumped for Remind. I am so keen to see what the fuck is going on. I got to say when I returned to Kingdom Hearts 3 recently to kind of like uh, polish it off before I did the last stream, um, I like forgot a bunch of narrative stuff. And as I was, like, playing it with my girlfriend next to me, we were, like, both kind of, like, trying to refresh ourselves on some things. It was really amusing. Uh, it, was, it was a little fun to rediscover some of those things. This is, the, of course, the longest break I've ever taken from Kingdom Hearts, right? The one year between Kingdom Hearts 3 launching and recently playing it. So it's only going to get worse waiting for Kingdom Hearts 4 or whatever the next one is. Let me crack open Streamlabs real quick shoutouts today shoutouts today oh my god I gotta click a thing again oh no I wasn't ready I got far too ahead of myself shoutouts today <laughs> to Struggle Punk 2 Commando Joe Frenchy French Aussie Manny uh, Cat Yam HD, Blade Thrine, 123 Man, and... And that's it. That's it. That's all the shoutouts. I always get ahead of myself, just keep saying and, but you know what? It's fine. Shoutouts to you guys. I appreciate you. Appreciate you all. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I was surprised at how many people were here at 9 a.m., so that was pretty fun, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy Byleth when he comes out, when they come out. Um... Byleth looks fun, even if it's not super thrilling. So, so yeah. Have a good evening, guys. Uh, fuck me, evening. It's 9.51 a.m. <laughs> like, implying you should go to bed right now. Have a good sleep. Don't go to work. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>